Hello everybody, hope you're having a fantastic day today. Thank you so much for checking out my video. Today I'm gonna to be going over a beginner guide to absolutely destroy the scoreboard. I do have a more advanced build if you're a bit of a higher level, but I wanted to make one for the beginners as well so you can get through that scoreboard as fast as possible. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the perk loadout first here, so. This is where you're going to have your uh, skill points allocated. And this is the build we're going to have. Now, I just want you to pay attention to gunsmith and batteries included. Um, they're not like, I, know, I understand, they're not super necessary. But it's just, I needed extra things to throw on because you need your intelligence to be at 15 anyway in order to get as much XP. And since this is a beginner build, I do suggest you use intelligence as a legendary perk card first. If you start to unlock these, start ranking up intelligence and maybe put on an endurance card if you have room to throw on another one, which I'm going to show here because this build is lacking a bit of defense, but it is a beginner build and this is something to work forward to. Again, I will link in the description an advanced build, but this is a good start for a beginner. And I would throw on Life Giver as well as when you can with that endurance perk card. Now for the mutations, Adrenal Reaction, Egghead, Herbivore, Herd Mentality, and Speed Demon and Scaly Skin aren't too necessary, but the first four that I mentioned are super necessary. I will link in the description a video on how to get mutations, as I will link in the video, or sorry, in the description on how to get Unyielding Armor, which is a necessity for doing this as well. You can get Unyielding Armor at player vendors, and you can just luck out and get it as well. It is a little bit of a grind to get it, but it is a must for this build. So what you really, the hard hardest things you're going to be working for for this build is the chainsaw and the unyielding armor but nonetheless it is something to work towards now i just want to show you why you need unyielding armor now you can see my intelligence is 37 and my luck is 11 right here strength is 11 perceptions too um Watch when I lower my health, and this is how Unyielding Armor works. You can get water from anywhere like I just did, dirty water, drink a bunch, and then just keep going until your rads push your health down to 20%, and Nerd Rage will go off. As long as you have the perks on that I showed you, Nerd Rage will go off, and then that'll tell you that you're getting the max benefit from the Unyielding Armor, and you can see these numbers are a lot higher. You need Unyielding Armor for this build. You also need a chainsaw for this build. Now I do recommend getting a vampire's chainsaw, which is easier said than done, but I'm gonna recommend that you roll one stars rather than, or sorry, rather than roll two stars. Um, or sorry, or even three stars, because you're gonna have twice as many chances to get the vampire's effect, and like it's it's a necessity for this build you can do it without it i'm going to show but you're going to use a lot of stim packs so like i said the chainsaw and the unyielding armor is going to be the hardest thing let me know in the comments if you have problems i'll try to get back to you as fast as i can and to get a chainsaw you can come to the metal dome over here i'm going to show a location but i'm also going to put a link to a video in the description showing you how to get the chainsaw and all the best mods and all that for it it's actually pretty simple um, I just thought I would show quickly here how to get a chainsaw. If it's not here, you might want to check out that video in the description. And once you have the chainsaw, you can get the flamer mod from a vendor. You can get the dual bar mod too, but it's very hard to find. I suggest just collecting as many chainsaws as you can, as I will suggest in the video I'm going to link, and scrap them to get the dual bar mod. Because... Like, finding it at a train station is not so easy. Finding the Flamer mod, though, definitely easy. Just checking out train stations. I recommend going to the Watoga train station. It's almost always there. Now, once you have all of this stuff, you're pretty much ready to go. I just want to show if you did try this without a Vampire's Chainsaw, this is the kind of effect you're going to get. You're going to get about 500 XP with everything that I've showed on no XP buffs. And it, the only problem is, you're like I said, you're just going to use a lot of stim packs, unfortunately. And the only reason I included this is because I know a lot of you aren't going to be able to get a Vampire's Chainsaw right away. So I do, 
you know, wish you the best of luck at rolling them. Maybe you can get one off of Reddit. I'll link a video or maybe at someone's store. You're most likely gonna have to roll one with modules. That's another reason why I suggest using two at a time rather than four so you can double your chances. Because all you need is a vampire's chainsaw. This is a one star that I'm using right here. And you can see when they shoot me, my health just fills right back up. You will die a lot less with the vampire's chainsaw and you almost won't even need stim packs. You can see the health is just having no problem, you know, staying full there. Like, are you going to die doing this? Yes, especially if you're a bit of a newer player, especially to Fallout or first-person uh, type games. You are going to die. But that's the part of practicing and getting better. So just work your way towards all of this stuff, and I'm sure you will figure it out eventually. Now, on to buffs that you're going to be using. I will link a video in the description describing buffs as well, or going over them, I should say. But a simple buff to get is to just sleep in your bed for about 30 seconds, and that will give you 5% bonus XP. So I just kind of wanted to get you started here with the XP buffs. Like I said, I will link some videos in the description of the best ones to start with, and I do have a playlist on about 5 to 10 XP buff videos. But sleeping, just to start off, you can see extra 5%. Lunch boxes are fairly easy to get a hold of. You can buy them if you really want, or you can earn them or get them with bullion, or just, you know, people will use them at events. So I just want to show just with the well rested and four lunch boxes, you can see we're getting almost 500 a dog kill now and over a thousand per super mutant. Just with the lunch boxes and well rested and all the other stuff that I told you to put on. So you, with like, I think just getting to this point, it can be done in probably a couple days to a week, depending how much you play, maybe even faster, depending on how much you can hustle. Now, just to show with a couple other buffs like food, uh, berry mentats and a leader bobblehead, you can see just with those extra four things, I've gone up another 500 XP per super mutant. I'm at 1500 now per super mutant. So it's really just working towards everything, everybody, if you're watching this. And like I said, you you are gonna die just chill out you know try to relax you know I get mad myself it is what it is but when you do die you lose your well rested and your rads do go down and your health basically goes up but here's a bed that you can rest at in West Tech and here's some toxic goo that you can get to bring your rads back down when you die your rad or sorry your health goes up over that 20% so you're not really getting the full benefit now when it comes to recycling the zombies or making them respawn when you go down stairs in the elevator don't just go running at those super mutants with the chainsaw you might want to run past them and use a ranged weapon even without perks it's probably better to kill enemies with a ranged weapon i recommend um, a combat rifle or a flamer specifically the holy fire if you can get your hands on it and if you do not know how to reset the super mutants or you don't understand what i'm talking about here i will link a, a video in the description called secrets of west tech that will explain all of that to you Okay, now that pretty much covers it, everybody. I know it's a lot to take in, but I'm pretty sure I covered everything in the video. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to point out, or if you have any questions, me or someone else will get back to you as soon as possible. And I really hope this helps you smash out that scoreboard as fast as possible if you're a beginner. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I just wanted to mention I forgot to add this into my video, so I thought I would add it to the end here. Um, the reason the XP is so important for destroying the scoreboard is the repeatable, which is a weekly challenge that is always there and you can always use it until you get to level 100. And what it is, is it gives you points towards the scoreboard every time you get 10,000 XP, depending on score boosters, or if you have Fallout first and you have other boosters, but the base is 100 points towards the score every time it goes off. Now, regular daily challenges are barely, you know, more than that. So if that puts in perspective how fast this can help you get the scoreboard done, I hope it does because that's the trick and you can really get it done a lot faster than you think with just using that repeatable. Again, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Have a great day.